dark, ever-hungry monsters live all across the universe. They're born when massive stars blast into space. Black holes as heavy as Earth are just as large as a ping-pong ball. They don't have a surface, but their gravity is so strong even light can't escape it. Black holes don't have physical boundaries like a membrane either. The event horizon, which is closest to a typical boundary, is a threshold which, after passing, you can't get out. For a star, running into a black hole normally ends in a spectacular light show and its destruction. Just one star that astronomers know of managed to survive an encounter with a black hole as heavy as 400,000 suns. It happened in a galaxy about 250 million light-years away from Earth. Astronomers with really powerful equipment noticed bursts of X-rays that raged in space every 9 hours. They thought they must be mayday signals from a star trapped by a cosmic abyss. The star was an average red giant when it met its new friend for the first time. When they got too close to each other, the hungry space monster couldn't resist the temptation and snacked on its guest. When it was done with the star's outer hydrogen layers, all that was left was the star's core. Eventually, the poor thing turned into a white dwarf. But for some reason, the giant space monster couldn't finish the meal and trapped it in its orbit for later instead. Ever since, the now white dwarf has been traveling in 9-hour laps. It stays far enough from the hole so it won't fall in or get swallowed. Its journey isn't going super smoothly. Because of gravity, the orbital path is constantly rotating. After two days, it resembles a spirograph pattern. As the black hole keeps snacking on it, the star keeps losing its mass and growing in size. Its own orbit is becoming more and more circular. Scientists believe one day it will be able to spiral away from its mean friend and turn into a planet the size of Jupiter in a trillion years. That's 70 times longer than the universe has existed so far, so it might not ever happen. The Milky Way alone has hundreds of millions of black holes, and there are way more beyond it. They might feed on other stars and release them in other galaxies. The telescopes that exist now might not be strong enough to spot them. Most galaxies, including our Milky Way, have supermassive black holes at the center. They can be billions of times heavier than the Sun. Others of their kind are only three times the mass of the Sun. The nearest black hole to the Earth was spotted 1,000 light-years away, just around the corner in galactic terms. It's in a star system you can see with an unaided eye. Scientists found it when they noticed a star behaving weirdly. It was a giant rotating like crazy. They guessed it must have a powerful gravitational companion. The hungriest black hole astronomers have spotted so far weighs as much as 34 billion suns and is about six times bigger than the one at the center of the Milky Way. It eats the equivalent of one sun every day. Sometimes, black holes even devour others of their kind that happen to be too close to them. Before you get on a spaceship to escape to some safe, no-black-hole galaxy, here's some good news. Even though they're supermassive, they don't have a radius large enough to destroy Earth. And even the hungriest of them are safe to watch from a distance. No black hole should come closer to our planet than the Sun for as long as the universe has existed, multiplied by 10 billion times. In the unlikely case one of these scary things passes by Neptune, it could affect the Earth's orbit. That would be no good. In theory, anything can turn into a black hole. The only difference between it and the Sun is the material their centers are made of. It's incredibly dense in those huge space monsters. In reality, there's just one known way to make a black hole. It has to be the gravitational collapse of a supermassive star, 20 to 30 times the mass of the Sun. So, the Sun will never ever become a black hole. If it happened, though, and the former star retained its mass, it would still have the same gravitational power. Earth would still keep going around it and wouldn't get pulled in. 
its orbit would also remain as it is. The only huge problem would be the lack of sunlight. In reality, the Sun isn't massive enough for such a transformation and will eventually become a white dwarf. A black hole won't ever eat an entire galaxy for lunch. There are about 400 billion stars inside the Milky Way. Just around 0.1% of all the stars that will ever form will end up becoming black holes. The ever-hungry supermassive monster, located right in the middle of a galaxy, has an impressive gravitational reach. But even that wouldn't be enough. It has already eaten most of the stars that were close to it. It already weighs like a few million suns, so it can't grow much larger even if it keeps snacking on sun-like stars. Galaxies will keep bumping into each other, and black holes will keep growing and merging. But because the universe is already huge and keeps expanding, these collisions and mergers won't go on forever. Black holes will travel this huge space like rogue stars. They won't even be able to eat the dark matter on the outskirts of galaxies. Eventually, all the black holes will perish, but that would be a long, long time from now. If you ever become a space explorer and travel far enough to meet a black hole and fall into one, your life won't instantly end. Instead, things will be way more complicated. The way you perceive space and time will change, and your reality will split in two. In one of them, you'd cease existing. In the other, you'd live and enter the hole unharmed. When you go deeper inside the hole, you'll notice space becoming curvier and curvier. At the center of the hole, it's infinitely curved. It's called singularity. Laws of physics based on the ideas of space and time don't have power here. In a large enough hole, millions of times more massive than the sun, things would go perfectly smoothly for you. And you just keep free-falling, feeling no gravity. You could just keep falling and falling in total emptiness until you reach singularity. You'd have no chance to move in the opposite direction. In there, space and time switch roles. Time is constantly pulling you forward on Earth, but figuratively, and it would be doing that quite physically inside the hole. In a smaller hole, the force of gravity would be stronger at your feet than your head. That's why you would go through spaghettification. This is how scientists call the process when you compress horizontally and stretch vertically like spaghetti because of crazy gravity of the black hole. Speaking of spaghetti, how are black holes like an Italian dinner? Because once you go pasta the event horizon, you get spaghettified. And since you're all by yourself, you'd be feeling cannelloni right now. Wow, now I'm hungry. Meanwhile, if you had a fellow space traveler who, for some reason, didn't end up in the black hole, it would look all different to them. They'd see you stretch and grow, like through a huge magnifying glass. The closer you get to the edge of the hole, the more it would seem like you're moving in slow motion. Then you'd freeze, and the flames would surround you. You'd be in two places at the same time, living different destinies. But there would still be just one copy of you. This is how black holes teach us nothing is real. Reality can be different to different people. Some scientists believe that we're all living inside a huge black hole. Everything in the universe started with the Big Bang. But there's a theory saying there was also something before that. It was a super-dense seed that had all the mass and energy of the universe concentrated in it about as heavy as a billion suns. It was a trillion times smaller than any particle humans can observe. This seed could be born inside a black hole. If you believe there's more than one universe, black holes could also serve as doors between those universes. It could be like a root that two trees share. You can't see a black hole directly because it doesn't give off any light. Scientists used to be able to only spot them by what they were doing to their surroundings. When over 200 scientists around the world worked together, they managed to take the first pictures of that space oddity. The equipment they used, 
added together would be the power of a telescope the size of Earth. Now imagine a place where a single day lasts longer than a whole year. On Venus, a day, meaning one full spin on its axis, is as long as 243 Earth days. And what's even weirder, despite the fact that Venus is experiencing a never-ending day, it has a shorter year than Earth. While Earth takes about 365 days to complete one orbit around the Sun, Venus does it in just 225 days. So, somehow, for Venus, a day is more epic than a whole year. Venus is a strange planet in general. It's called Earth's twin because of how alike we are, although it's a bit smaller than Earth. But there are some drastic differences, too. For example, it spins in the opposite direction, which means the sun there rises in the west and sets in the east. And Venus isn't the only one who dances to its own rhythm. Uranus does that, too. And finally, Venus is quite crazy in terms of its atmosphere. When you stand on Earth, you don't really feel the weight of the air around you. Well, on Venus, that feeling would be like having an elephant sitting on your shoulders. Venus has 90 times the atmospheric pressure of Earth. The atmosphere there is a thick layer of toxic gases. For example, carbon dioxide that's released by all the volcanoes. It presses down with incredible force. This results in very hot temperatures. No wonder it'll take a long time before we'll be able to stand on this planet. Meanwhile, Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun, has an even more speedy orbit than Venus. It completes a full journey around the Sun in just about 88 Earth days. However, it has a slow spin on its axis, which means that one day on Mercury takes about 176 Earth days, basically half a year. Just like with Venus, a day there takes much longer than a year. Since it's closest to the Sun, no wonder Mercury experiences some super-extreme temperature swings. Daytime temperatures can soar up to a scorching 800 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt lead. But wait for the sunset. At night, it drops to freezing minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. That's because Mercury doesn't have a thick atmosphere like we do, so the heat doesn't distribute across the planet evenly. If one side is in the dark, it'll be super cold and the other side will be scorching hot, just like if you let a regular big rock lie down under the sun for a while. In fact, it's so cold that there might even be some ice on it. Look at the planet's north polar region, especially those sunlit yellow spots inside craters. These are indications of water ice. Turns out water is much more common in space than we thought. Mars is often dubbed the red planet. It earns this nickname from the abundance of iron oxide, or rust, covering its surface. The iron-rich minerals create a rusty red hue that paints the Martian landscape. But it turns out, Mars isn't just red. If you were standing on Mars, you'd witness desert-like butterscotch terrain with caramel and golden glows, some brown, and even a glimpse of a slight greenish hue. Mars also has the biggest mountain in the entire solar system, Olympus Mons standing at a staggering height of about 13.6 miles tall. It's even taller than Mount Everest. It was formed by the volcanic eruption yielding low-viscosity lava, creating a shield-like structure. Since Mars is covered in sand, it's also famous for its crazy dust storms. But it turns out they're even more insane than we thought. These storms can last for months. While they might present challenges for future human missions, they also contribute to the planet's mesmerizing appearance when observed from afar. And not only storms, but even its own Mars quakes. Also known as seismic tremors, they were first detected by NASA in 2019. Unlike earthquakes that are often triggered by tectonic plate movements, Martian quakes are thought to result from the cooling and contracting of the planet's interior. It's interesting how similar, yet how different the planets are. Saturn's iconic rings might hold a secret link to Earth's ancient past. The rings are composed mainly of ice particles and debris and are estimated to be relatively young in space terms, perhaps just a few hundred million years old. Now, there are some theories that propose that they were born after some catastrophic event. For example, the collision of two large moons or the breakup of a comet. What's interesting is that this timeline coincides with the age of the dinosaur's demise on Earth. Could there be a connection? <laughs> Who knows? By the way, while Saturn takes the crown for its rings, 
It's not the only planet in our solar system sporting them. Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune all have their own set of rings, although they might not be as visible and cool as Saturn's. However, there's something where Saturn truly stands out – the magnificent hexagon at its North Pole. It's a colossal six-sided figure. Each side of this incredible structure measures around 9,000 miles long, which is 1,200 miles longer than the Earth's diameter. Scientists aren't sure how it was formed or why. They think it might be due to varying wind speeds. Or maybe it's shaped by a localized, slow, meandering jet stream. So far, it remains another of Saturn's mysteries. Our Sun is an average-sized star, and still, it could fit 1,300,000 Earths. The star is also 333,000 times as heavy as our planet. NASA has translated radio waves created by planets' atmospheres into audible sounds. That's how astronomers found out that Neptune sounds like ocean waves. Jupiter, like being underwater. And Saturn's voice resembles background music to a horror movie. Here on Earth, it's bebop jazz. Now I made that up. The sun's surface is scorching hot, but a bolt of lightning is five times hotter. Earth gets struck by 100 lightning bolts every second, which results in 8 million lightning strikes a day and around 3 billion a year. Ooh, shocking! If you manage to go to the moon one day and see fresh footprints, that doesn't mean there's someone else there with you. Footprints or similar marks can last for a million years over there. Because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. There are no winds, not even a breeze, that can slowly erase those footprints. Astronomers have found the largest hole we've ever seen in the universe. It's the giant void that spreads a billion light years across. They found it accidentally. One of the research team members was a little bored and wanted to check how things are going in the direction of the cold spot. That's an anomaly in the Cosmic Microwave Background Map, or CMB for short. It's a faint glow of light that falls on our planet from different directions and fills the universe. It's been streaming through space for almost 14 billion years as the afterglow that occurred after the Big Bang. So you fall right into the heart of the black hole and prepare for a sad end. Well, you don't have to. Falling into a black hole won't necessarily destroy you or your spaceship. You have to choose a bigger black hole to survive. If you fall into a small black hole, its event horizon is too narrow, and the gravity increases every inch down. So if you extend your arm forward, the gravity on your fingers is much stronger than on your elbow. This will make your hand lengthen, and you'll feel some… discomfort. Rather significant, to be honest. Things change if you fall into a supermassive black hole, like the ones in the center of galaxies. They can be millions of times heavier than the Sun. Their event horizon is wide, and the gravity doesn't change as quickly. So, the force you'll feel at your heels and at the top of your head will be about the same. And you can go all the way to the heart of the black hole. This myth is busted. If you watch a very touching movie in space and start crying, your tears won't run down. They will gather around the eyeballs. Your eyes will get too dry, so you'll feel like they're burning. Any exposed liquid on your body will vaporize, including the surfaces of your tongue. Speaking of burning, that's one thing fire can't do in space. Fire can spread when there's a flow of oxygen. And since there's not any in space, well… Once they explode, stars aren't supposed to come back to life. But some of the stars somehow has survived the great supernova explosion. Such zombie stars are pretty rare. Scientists found a really big one called LP40-365. It's a partially burnt white dwarf. A white dwarf is a star that burned up all of the hydrogen, and that hydrogen was previously its nuclear fuel. In this case, the final explosion was maybe weaker than it usually is, not powerful enough to destroy the entire star. It's like a star wanted to explode but didn't make it, which is why part of the matter still survived. If you ever go into space, don't take off your spacesuit unless you're on a spaceship. Air in your lungs would expand, as well as the oxygen in the rest of your body. You'd be like a balloon, 
twice your regular size. Good news? The skin is elastic enough to hold you together, which means you wouldn't explode. <laughs> Small comfort. When something goes into a black hole, it changes shape and gets stretched out just like spaghetti. This happens because gravitational force is trying to stretch an object in one direction, but at the same time, squeeze it into another, like a pasta paradox. Speaking of, a black hole that's as big as a single atom has the mass of a really big mountain. There's one at the center of the Milky Way called Sagittarius A. It has a mass like for a billion suns, but luckily, it's far away from us. If you made a big boom on an asteroid, you'd never be able to hear its loud sound. Yes, we often hear the sound of spaceships and battles in space in the movies, but that's just a myth. Sound is a wave that spreads because of the vibrations of molecules. A person claps a few feet away from you, the sound wave begins to push the first air molecule next to the clap, then the second, third, and so on, until the wave reaches your ear. So, to spread sound, we need molecules like air or water. In our atmosphere, sound waves spread out just fine. But space is a vacuum, so it's nothing here. You can clap your hands loudly there, but there just won't be any molecules that can vibrate and carry that sound. So, to carry on a conversation, you'd either need a radio or really good lip-reading skills. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.